Call to order. Today's Friday, November 11th, 2022. The SGT SAC meeting. Call to order. The council members will please put their attendance in the chat. Much appreciated. And then I will yield the floor to Kenny. Do you have an announcement? Hi, uh, yes. Uh, hello, everyone. I would just like to do a little bit of housekeeping when it comes to the resolutions. Um, just wanted to make it public and announce that for CR 22-14, that is skipped in our numbering, but we'll just go on forward to work with what we have. And probably just as a gentle reminder to the council that when making resolutions, um, let's wait until it has been passed to number it. So that is a lot easier to manage and to put in the list. Thank you. Thank you, Kenny. All right, so we'll move on to the approval agenda. As normal, the agenda has been sent out in advance, so I'm assuming all the council members have had a chance to look at it. So is anybody opposed to moving forward with the agenda? All right, hearing none. So the agenda is approved. We're on to the um, reports and updates. Just a reminder, um, everybody, so let's, if you don't have an update that's specifically pertinent to this week and something that can't wait going forward or something that's happened in your committee. Um, so a quick updates and if anything that's not pertinent, you can put into a chat or send you an email to the whole council. Just make sure you CC student advocacy as well as the TSAC members, just because our agenda and new business is, is very full this week. So with that being said. Paul, do you have a do you have an update? I do not. All right. Governing documents, do you have an update? So the governing documents committee had a meeting today, but nobody showed up. So um, we currently have no new updates. And um, as chair of the governing documents committee, um, I might just want to raise the idea that we call into the question the notion of a standing governing documents committee. I think when forming committees, it's much better to have like a task before the committee that upon completion, committee becomes dissolved. And so um, I'm going to throw it out there just as a um, a member said committee that maybe we um, look to dissolve the governing documents committee and reformulate it around like a like a membership handbook uh, committee that upon the completion of that text will be done. But uh, I see you have a question, Mike. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say that right now. Um, yes, the handbook's the only thing that's at the moment needs to probably be revised. But um, I, if that's what the committee would turn to, then I'm all in agreement. Cool. Um, does anybody have any questions about what's going on in the governing documents committee? All righty, then I'll just, uh, uh, that'll conclude our update. So thank you. Thank you. Mike, do you have a SACAB update or Stephanie after that, if you have anything to add? Sure. Just real quickly for SACAB, um, we had a lot happen, but I'm just condensed to this. The timeline for the bylaws. So this is our last bylaw meeting was this morning. Um, we have, th there's three rounds of ratification. We are done uh, meeting as an ad hoc committee. They will be voted on um, next week, the bylaws. And then with that, from November 18th to December 9th, we're doing an advising period. So all three SGAs have a time in place if they want to advise the um, SACA bylaws anyway. They want to pass it, uh, give it their stamp of approval. To pass this, um, SACA does not need their approval in any way. Um, but it's just kind of a courtesy we're extending to them to look, take a look at it, see if they have anything with it. Um, December 9th, we will vote to finally approve it through SACAB. It will go to the board of directors after that. So that's the timeline for that. Stephanie, do you have anything to add if you're on? All right, thank you. Board of Trustee update. Gabe, you have the floor. Hi, y'all. I have no update. No update. Thank you. Thank you, Gabe. Chad, Public Relations Committee. All right, super quick update. Um, we paid for the website. We paid for the domain. Issue that I'm running into is we purchased them on two separate sites, and now I'm trying to figure out how to link them. Um, it's a task and a half. Um, additionally, for events, uh, Food for Finals is coming along well. Uh, Mike is doing an excellent job with that. And then I... <coughs> I'm aware of the uh, the flagging event that is supposed to be happening on Tuesday. Zero percent of this work has been done. Um, I am not even aware of if the space has been 
uh, rented or, or approved by AHEC for us to do this flagging event. And so I am I'm going to make a motion that we move this to one week from now um, to work on the logistics of how this happens, because as of right now, there is none. OK, is there a second on that? I'll second that. Is anybody opposed? Taylor. I mean, my general opposition is just that this event was supposed to be during um, AHA week, but that's, that's all I have. Okay. I totally recognize that that was the, the initial plan. Um, I, I've tried to reach out to, uh, to Alex, the writer of this, to, uh, to, for him to work on some of the logistics of these items. Um, and it, it just genuinely has not been done, and he has not asked for help. Um, and had help been asked for, then I could have worked on this. But now we are at a point where I don't have time to work through all the logistics of of an event in four days. Thank you. So there's a second. All right. So uh, call the question. Oh. Yeah, we should go by who's opposed. All right. So, well, Taylor was opposed. Okay. Are you still opposed, Taylor? I mean, I'll just abstain. OK, so. Anybody else opposed? Anybody have any discussion pushing it off or or can we move on with that? I, I want to speak. Go ahead. I just think it's a good idea that when we do do this, we do it right and um, with some organization so that uh, it doesn't reflect poorly on us. Um, and so I agree with the, the thrust of the motion here just to figure out, you know, even if it isn't during AHA week, I think that, um, you know, the idea that we do it right and with uh, you know, permission from AHEC, because I'd hate to see all these flags get put in the grass and then pulled out by AHEC employees. You know, it'd be a lot of ways to work on both ends. So I like the motion and think it would get us some good direction on this. All right. Call the question. Sure. I just don't, yeah. Alan. Oh yeah, he's not there. Alex. Not present. Chad. Yes. Gabe. Abstain. James. Yes. Mike. Yes. Naomi. Yes. Paul. Yes. Three. Yes. Stephanie. Taylor. Abstain. Dan. Yes. Yep. Res uh, motion passes. We'll push it off one week. CSGC representative updates, no updates this week. When one comes, the council will be notified at large. Bree, policy advisory committee. No updates this week. Thank you. Mike, budget committee. Um, no updates this week. Thank you. Faculty student affairs committee. Naomi. Uh, we have a meeting on November 18th, so we'll have something for you next Friday. All right, thank you. Can I add to that as well? Um, they want to know the online educational resources survey that's upcoming. Um, they want feedback from us on that. So if anybody has any thoughts on what they'd like to see for online educational resources and you know how that could possibly be grown, if anybody has any ideas, please share them with Naomi or me if you can. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Sustainability Committee, Taylor. Um, Mike and I are working with Amy Romero from um, Student Orgs just to work out some kinks. We we found out that um, see, with Student Orgs, they hadn't been making following the Green Purchasing Agreement a requirement to or getting the funds, but now we figured it out and it's going to be wonderful. Thank you so much. Good work. Mike. And I'll just add to that. Um, 
I've joined the sustainability committee, not in my role as TSAC, but my role in CMEI. So I do work in CMEI and that is the assignment I've been assigned to. So um, in a different role, that's like my new task is to make sure the green purchasing agreement is um, up and running through CMEI. So just thought I announced that to the, the council. Thank you, Mike. Oh, okay, it's COVID response committee. Alan, there, Alan's not here. There was no meeting this week. That was last week. All right. Um, Bree, Student Travel Committee. We don't have any presentations just now. I think there's one for next week, right? Yeah, that's right, yeah. All right, thank you, Ree. Uh, let's see, Indigenous Student Resource Committee. Do you have a, uh, an announcement, Naomi? That's pertinent to this week. Nope, okay. Let's see. And then the subsection N council goals update. Anybody have an update in the goals? Re. I um I think I've mentioned last time that I've been talking with Yvonne Smith. She's the VP of Institutional Advance Advancement for the scholarships. And she has sent me a list of a partial list of graduate student scholarships, but um, I have been looking at undergraduate all scholarships on the website, and I wondered if anybody wanted to um, kind of meet with me um, outside of this meeting so we can have a talk, because what I'd like to ask that group is that they categorize our scholarships for all students in a way that you don't have to click into every one to be able to read them. I think that would be like I was talking to Gabe about um, for DACA students, you know, you don't really know until you're clicking in to each one of them. And I think it's really burdensome. And I wondered if there was a way to filter these things. And that's what I'd like to put to her. And I thought if anybody wanted to, you know, we could put our heads together prior to, you know, the middle of next week to come up with some ideas we'd like to ask. That would be great because they're a good, they're doing an audit of all the scholarships right now. And, um, you know, everything opens again on December 1st and it'd be nice to get this information to them soon. So if anybody wants to help, please let me know. So they, uh, somebody who wants to help can email you, you said? Yeah, because I just, I just want to, I don't want to leave anything out in asking some things and I think sooner is better than later. I okay. mean, maybe nothing can happen, but you know, I, I feel like filtering options would be helpful to all students. Right. Thanks. Cool. Thank you. Paul. Um, I, uh, something came up that I think I should have had in the updates, but it's relevant to the goals. So I'll kind of work it around the goals. Um, the president's cabinet meeting is coming up on the 16th that I'll be going to presenting on the work we've, we've done since the last time we updated them. Um, and if anyone has any particular goals that they want us to raise to the forefront when I'm in that meeting, uh, Feel free to shoot me a message, talk to me in person, shoot me an email. Um, but yep, just wanted to raise that attention and know that, you know, you have an issue you want me to bring to the president's cabinet meeting, happy to do it for you and represent our, our council up there. Thank you, Paul. Any other counselors have an uh, up goal update? Mike. Just briefly, then you can bring this to the president's cabinet meeting, but um, definitely I'd say bring them um, food, food for finals. I think that's a event that we should absolutely be proud, like be proud of what we're putting on. So um, I definitely want that. I wouldn't mind them helping advertise some of this too. So um, that's something I definitely think we should bring up and it does fall in within our goal of food insecurity. So thank you, Mike. All right. Advisor updates. Dr. Brown or I guess Dr. Brown first if we have something and then Armando or the other way around is fine too. Is Armando here? Nope, not here in person. OK, cool. Um, so my update is just I wanted to share uh, some news that um, I got just this past week. Sorry, all of my notifications are going off um, regarding a project called the I don't know if you all have ever heard of the Auraria Recovery Community. Um, the Auraria Recovery Community is something I believe we got a grant for several years ago um, that has been overseen and led by CU Denver. It is a student led um, initiative that um, is to help support students who are impacted by addiction. 
um, and or who have family members um, who are impacted by addiction. And so as of this past week, we learned that um, the health center at Auraria will now be um, overseeing the Auraria recovery community and Richard Michio, I don't know if he's come and talked to you all yet, um, is the assistant director for the health center who does health education and equity work. Um, he um, has been helping to oversee that transition. Again, it's student led, student driven, um, and I think it's it's a really great thing for our community to help support um, a lot of the needs. Um, so just wanted to share that. I don't know, I thought you all might be interested in that or wanting to learn more. Um, it's a great campus resource. Um, and then just as a reminder, um, that Medicaid is also being accepted by the health center and that's a huge, big deal. 4,000 additional students that weren't receiving medical care um, on this campus because of access or whatever they they might go in the community because of Medicaid now have access to health care. Um, so just a lot of cool stuff happening at the health center that I wanted to share here and didn't know if that's something maybe we wanted to invite someone from the health center to come talk about some of the cool things happening there. That's it. Thank you, Dr. Brown. Mm -hmm. Awesome. OK. So we have for updates and. On, that's all we have for updates today. No old business. So on to new business. Taylor, green purchasing funds. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for being here today. Um, what I am asking today is $80 to go towards a event being put on by um, Den MSU Denver Women in Aviation Chapter. Their president, Natalie Grammer, reached out to me. They heard about our fund where we give money for compostable materials. They are requesting $80. I would motion that we grant them this request. I have a second. second. I have a second. All right, the chair recognizes the motion and the second. Is anybody opposed? All right. Hearing none. $80 has been granted to the women of aviation. Thank you. Thank you. Now on to business B, accountability committee. Paper, methods of how the committee will conduct business. Chad, you have the floor. All right. Um, we're getting Kenny access right now so we can pull this up for everybody to, to see. <clears throat> um, so based off of our last meeting where the accountability committee was motioned to uh, to be created. Um, I'm going to read this this paper uh, as far as how this accountability committee is going to be conducting themselves. OK, um, the motion to create an accountability committee was as follows. The accountability committee will be erected to address overall behavioral issues by Alan Williams. <clears throat> Uh, taking this motion and CR 22-5 into consideration, this committee will be a review of the actions of the individual in question, Alan Williams, during their time as a student government counselor. Actions and questions will be statements made in official communications such as meetings and chat, as well as testimonial from council members and members of the public that have been affected by the counselor in question. Due to the verbiage of the motion, the committee will also be addressing the continued behavior of Alan Williams until the committee is dissolved. The committee will remove re, 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 words. The committee will review the content of its findings in an objective manner and will refer to documents that govern SGTSEC and the student body. Examples of documents that will be used are the MSU Denver Student Code of Conduct, the SGTSEC Handbook, the SGTSEC Communal Document for times prior to its abolishment. SGT SAC constitution for times after its creation. During the gathering of information, the findings of the committee will not be shared with other members of the council that are not a part of the committee or the public until the report has been completed. All the findings and meetings will then become public and available for any, any to request. This is to dissuade individuals from colluding in favor of any specific outcome. <clears throat> The committee will report its findings on November 28th, 2022, and will allow time for the council to review and determine if the findings are in good faith. The council will vote on the recommendation on the recommendations during the next regularly scheduled meeting. 
The early publishing of these findings will allow the member in question time to write a response to their to the findings. The response is encouraged so that due process is made available and so that member and so the member may address the council and public they serve prior to the council's voting of the recommendation. Multiple recommendations will be given to the council to vote on if the committee finds that ooh, if the committee finds items that need to be addressed. <clears throat> the recommendations will be made in a tiered system from most severe to least severe. The council will first vote on the most severe. If the council votes against that this action, it will move to the next tier and so on. This method is used in the name of restorative justice, ensures some accountability will be recognized. And as I have addressed the distribution of power among the council, it is important to recognize what this committee is able to do. This committee holds no power over any individual, including the individual in question. The committee has been delegated the responsibility of the tasks I have mentioned previous and will report its findings with recommendation for the entire council to determine whether appropriate or inappropriate, then vote on the action. The member in question is still a part of SGT SAC and its governing process and should still be viewed as an equal to us all. Additionally, as chair of this committee, I will work to ensure a just outcome for all involved after the information has been gathered. Are there any questions about the methods in which this committee is going to be uh, conducting its business? And also, um, the committee is going to be made up of myself, Mike Warner, Dan Giles, James Vargas, and Gabe Trujillo. Go ahead, Paul. Thanks, Chad. Um, I think this is really well written. There's just a point I have a question about, I guess, is when we talk about the... Can you scroll down just a little bit, Kenny? Sorry. So the bit that talks about determining the recommendations, the recommendation of the tiered system. Maybe help me understand why it is we'd want to go with like most severe to less severe, voting on the most severe first. So the idea behind this is if the committee makes a recommendation for the council and the council then determines that this recommendation is not appropriate for the situation, then then what happens in the name of restorative justice? If we only provide one and it is not voted, it is not agreed upon by the council, there is there is no restorative justice that happens. Um, the most, and the reason that I say most severe to least severe is because we are addressing the major, as much of the findings possible in the first tier and then moving down less and less. Okay, I appreciate the answer. Thank you. Any further questions for Chad? Okay. Hearing none. All right. Thank you, Chad. To subsection C, promotion of community town hall. Mike, you have the floor. Thank you. So um, this is thank you, thank you, Kenny. So this is um, something that um, Juan Gonzalez, the president of CU Denver um gave to me and asked if we would actually join but um one of his campaign promises was to kind of put on a town hall event um and this one specifically is kind of um directly um what is the term I'm looking for connected to um, campus safety so their sister school in boulder cu boulder passed um i don't know what i want to say resolution but they have banned concealed carry on their campuses and um that is a kind of a call they've called for um, CU Denver to do the same. So he's holding this um, town hall and he's asked if a few of us could would be there with him or be there with represent TSAC at this town hall. So that's generally what this is about. I'd ask if we want to promote this or not and send some representatives. Generally. Thank you, Mike. Um, so up the floor discussion. Anybody opposed to doing this? Anybody have any ideas? Anybody have any questions? Go ahead, Taylor. Um, I just want to make a comment that the Colorado Supreme Court, they've ruled twice that the, C, the CU board, their board of regents, they don't have the authority to ban concealed carry. So I don't know who has that authority. Thank you, Taylor. My, uh, Paul. I, um, I attended a, a similar town hall um, earlier last semester that was held in conjunction with the police on campus. And um, I just remember there being a lot of like, uh, like information produced by the police 
brought there that would basically talk about the pros and cons of police reform. Um, and it was, I don't know, it was a very, let's just say a very biased event and one that kind of swept under the rug a lot of the concerns at the time about the concerns that are still prevailing about police reform and um, justice reform in regards to criminal justice. And so I would just, I would want to know, you know, what's the general thrust of the event here? And is it in any way a, a way to help um, refurbish the image of the police on campus? If so, I'd be less interested. But, um, but if it's what it's saying here, you know, talking about the advancement of, you know, sustainability, diversity, equity, and inclusion, mental health awareness, I'm all for it. I just, the last town hall I went to like this ended up being a bit of a, um, yeah, just a wash. Um, so in response to that, this is not being held by the police or the police have not been invited. They may show up, no clue. But this is um, being, this is purely information gathering. I think, to be honest, we should probably hold a town hall at some point, I think, as a, as a council. Um, this is just a good way to kind of like go to their town hall and get some information from the students, what's their concerns. And these are kind of the primary topics at the moment that CU Denver has chosen to recognize. Um, our mission statement might be a little bit different as well. Um, in response to Taylor's point, um, you know what? I mean, there's a lot of people who, I mean, I don't know, we'll see. I will say in terms of that, we cannot, they cannot ban concealed carry on CU Denver's campus because we're all three of us are connected. So if that's something we like, the administration or other boards chose to do, all three had to be on board for that. So um, it's a tough situation, but you know what? I mean, all kind of struggles are tough. So that's what I'd say. I mean, even if they banned it, like what the CU regents wanted to do on like for all the CU campuses, they're not allowed to by the Colorado Constitution. That's, I mean, that's not, I mean, that's not an issue in our goals. That's an issue in CU Denver's goals. We, all I'm asking is, do we want to send a attache to this event? That's all I'm asking. Uh, Chad, so is the question, and do we want to send somebody as a representative from MSU to just a, attend this community town hall or to address the concealed carry situation that you have brought up? Um, attend this town hall. So the ask is to just if we want to send some reps to send some attend. representatives there to speak on behalf of them and to speak. speak. OK, so not just attend to speak. Yes, I mean, okay. you, you're basically attending. I mean, there's a chance you might okay. they may ask us some questions as well. Okay. So. James. I kind of echo how Taylor, what, what Taylor's talking about, like, you know, if it's something that the Colorado Constitution protects, you know, like, is this really something we should, you know, take part in because we already know that it's more than likely, even if we go speak out and try to get something done, it's just going to get struck down by, you know, the Constitution and the court. So I don't I don't know if this is really something we should dive into personally. I'd like just to refer back to my point and saying this is purely information gathering and these are not representative of the we are not representative of CU Denver's goals and missions. We are there to represent MSU Denver, and um, we've been invited to speak on behalf of our council and our goals. And I mean, to, like I said earlier, we should probably have a town hall at some point, but I think this is a great opportunity to go get some information on, see what the students are saying. So that's what I would say in response to that. Are they even addressing that thing that passed over there at CU Boulder, or is this something just literally just a gathering for this for this campus here, or is this going to address that? Thing that they passed and then i'll get to you gabe um i'm not sure okay I, that was a topic that might have been brought up okay. i mean i just given this flyer and said hey do you guys want to attend all right gabe um i guess have a question are you all looking at the chat too um because the chat has also brought up people have brought up really good points on the chat as well um so i, I would suggest definitely looking you know or at least pulling it up or something um to make sure that those thoughts are not being um missed either thank you um, so I can read those. We have Re saying speak about ellipses question mark personal opinions question mark and Stephanie um, has said I think conversation and discourse is important. Uh, that's not the only topic being discussed either. Naomi says facts. Uh, I think if anything this is good networking for us agreeing with what Mike was saying. Re says it seems fraught regarding the gun item. Other topics are great and then Stephanie says you miss 100% of the shots you don't take y'all. We might have an opportunity to bring up something or address another concern. Naomi says exactly. Okay. So yes, I mean, just respond to that. I 
disagree with Re. I mean, I think this is a great, I, like, Steph, I think Stephanie's done a great job kind of saying my thoughts exactly. I think it's sure. a great way for us to connect with, connect with our sister campus and uh, maybe share some goals and, and, and represent us on the campus. So, yeah. Does anyone want to volunteer? I like the idea of a town hall for us to. So, does anyone want to volunteer to do it? Or, or uh, I plan on going to that event. You're going to go to the event. Gabe, my socks. Gabe, is that your? Is that the same hand or is that a new hand? Sorry, y'all. My computer is like lagging and I can't take my hand down. Can somebody like? I don't know if y'all can like, because I know y'all sometimes have the option to like take it down, and <laughs> it's not letting me take it down. So I don't know if y'all can do oh, it on your end. You got it now. Thank right. you. Chat. Okay, so are we are we asking if we want to send representatives to gather information in their town hall or to participate in their town hall as SGT stack? I mean, it could be either or. I could see a situation. Like, yeah, you can. I could see a situation where we're just kind of representing it on behalf of us or actually participating in the town hall. That was not really made too clear to me, but I mean, I'd be prefer prepared for both. Go ahead, Paul. Um, I, I, I don't see those as necessarily mutually exclusive, but whoever we do send should remember that their participation as a person in the town hall is separate than, say, their conversations with like MSU students. And like, you know, your personal opinions, like we were saying, aren't necessarily the opinion of the council. We haven't really discussed this issue and it's really kind of outside of what we would discuss. But um, yeah, and so I think if we do send somebody, we send someone to Yes Network, but also to participate in the town hall. Um, and remember that those two things are kind of distinct and to just be careful in conversation. And when you do speak on your own behalf, just preface that, say, you know, this isn't the reflecting of the um, opinions of the council, but just my own personal opinion, if you are to engage. Right. But besides that, I don't know what else is to, to, to be said on, yeah. you know? Yeah, so Stephanie said, uh, let's see. Didn't they want a partner? So this, Stephanie asked, didn't they want a partner? Or was this just a side thing that he did? Yeah. Oh, Stephanie, have your hand up. I can't see her hand. Stephanie, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, you're good. I was just going to ask. Maybe it'd be more clear if I just said it. Um, but I guess I'm kind of confused because are they asking for us to like partner with the town hall or are they just asking us to show support for their town hall? Are they asking, are they asking for at least a couple representatives to sit on the town hall as like, I don't know, speakers for MSU Denver, because when I'm looking at the flyer, it looks like it's already been advertised and not something that's been set up or something that has been set up. So I feel like if they're just asking for support, then like there's no real reason to like, kind of vote like is either you show up it's an event if you want to go to it or not but if it's more of a okay we want to like put your logo on this we want this to be maybe a tri-institutional matter then i would say we should vote on it and like delegate a couple of us to go to make sure that we're representing the students but yeah if i could get some clarification on that that would be great yeah and um Appreciate the question. Some of these things I just don't know. I don't believe we've been asked to market this event in any way. I believe we just asked to send some representatives to the event. So I'm not sure really what that entails, but I'd be prepared for kind of generally what it is. I know it's not really a good answer per se, but um, I was given this. I was supposed to do this last week and I completely forgot. It. So that's kind of where I'm at with it because it's this week, this following week. All right. Well, so Mike, since put the date in there, so it sounds like just to attend the event and be prepared to potentially ask to speak if you're lucky or if you've been called on, I guess. Um, so reach out to Mike or look at the calendar or look at the flyer for the date that it is and maybe want to coordinate with Mike because he said he'll be there. Yeah, if anyone, I, my plan was to be there. If anyone else wants to join, um, feel free to join me. Um, what I say is I will follow in accordance to our bylaws, which say um, I can only speak on what the council has passed and chosen to use as its goals. So that's and anything outside of that is my own personal opinion as a student on this campus. So thank you, uh, Taylor. I just thought we were going to this was something we we're going to vote on, but that's OK. Chad. I don't I don't want to beat a dead horse here, but. If if we are attending this as members of the public, then I don't think our 
title should be attached to this in any way, shape or form. If you attend this and you want to attend this, great. But if you make a comment or answer questions in any way, SGT SAT counselor should not be a part of your name because we have not discussed this as a council. Yes. So if we're not going to vote on it, yes. All right. A motion we lay this on the table and continue with the business of the day. Second. All right. Anyone opposed? Hearing. Hearing none. Oh, we have well, Ree has a hand. Ree, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, Ree. I I'm sorry to stop you. I just was going to try to write in the chat. Look on the issues of sustainability, which we support as TSAC. And um, if there's anything else on their topics list that we support as TSAC, we could speak as TSAC on those, right? Standing up in the crowd and making a comment as to what we're doing to support those initiatives that we are already working on, but nothing outside of that. I mean, I think that makes sense. Do you agree? Like, can I, <clears throat> like I said, um, if like when I go to this <laughs> event, anything, I will speak on behalf of the council for anything that's been passed, anything we've chosen to recognize as our goals, anything yeah, yeah. outside of that, I will speak as a member of the public. That is literally my plan for going into this event. Okay. So, so let's I hear do. out the motion okay. now that we've got that clarified, Re. Um, is anyone opposed that we continue on with the business of the day? All right. Hearing none. Hearing none. We'll go ahead and move on to the next section. Thank you, Paul. Okay, so this is D, subsection D of the new business, a resolution to declare spring 2023 elections. Mike. Yep. Okay, it's named something a little bit differently in the chat or on the actual page. It's the co-chair elections for the spring. So that got mixed up in translation, but on the resolution, that's a little bit different. Um, this is a basically a carbon copy of the elections that were done in the summer that um, elected our co-chairs. It's just... There, I'm going to read the abstract, and that's about it, because I've already read this before. So um, I will just do that real quick. This is a resolution to declare and facilitate spring 2020 SG co TSAC coast care elections. Um, here's just abstract. We, the ab student, ab student government, begin our fall session um, as the Student Advocate Council of Metropolitan State University of Denver with two co-chairs. We must elect our chair slash co-chairs. Um, of this council for the upcoming spring semester. But Mr. Firm, we affirm the importance of democratic principles in our work and want to ensure a framework wherein the candidates receiving the majority of the votes because become those who will assume the role of chair slash co-chairs. With the passing of this document, the council will put in place this framework for an election to take place on the 9th of December with nominations of nominations and the election of a elections commissioner taking place on the 2nd of December. And there's like a little formatting issue there, but... So yeah, basically this is just a carbon copy. Um, our last meeting is on the 9th of December. And um, second, the second is the second to last meeting of December. So yes, that's what basically what this does. Put those dates, it puts those dates in the calendar for us to vote on election co-chair elections for the next semester. And the point, the kind of reason I put this here like this is because um, I want us to be like the winter session or the winter uh, recess will be like a transition period between the two, the sets of co-chairs if, if they need to, so. Thank you, Mike. So let's open up the floor to discussion. Anybody have any dissenting opinions about doing this uh, co-chair thing like that? If not, then just open it up to the just general discussion. OK. Going a second time. Paul. No, um, just kind of outside of like necessarily dissent, but more in support of this. Um, I like this. I like uh, getting ahead of ahead of it so that we have a plan in place and we can follow through with that plan. So um, and I want to encourage folks who are interested in uh, the co-chair role. I've learned a lot in doing this. And so um, even if you just have like the thought in the back of your head, like maybe I'll do it, maybe I won't, you know, I don't know, do it because it'll teach you a ton. And um, even if it's just like cracking Robert's rules and stuff to learn more about how to facilitate these meetings, I've learned a lot about the parliamentary angle of it. Um, but yeah, I support this and, you know, assuming, well, if there's not a whole lot of other discussion, I would encourage one of us to call the question on it, being as it's like a carbon copy of the last one. And because it's a carbon copy of the last one, I'd like to be in the collaboration section. Uh, oh, yeah, I forgot. If that's cool. But, yes, I could. Yeah, just so we aren't plagiarizing any, any work here. 
I'm just joking, but yep, good work, Ruth. This one, Mike. We're on the council to work as a team, not bolster our resumes completely. Okay, so I call the question then, unless there's further discussion. Second. All right. Chad. Aye. Abe. Aye. James. Aye. Mike. Yes. Naomi. Paul. Aye. Bree. Aye. Stephanie. Yes. Taylor. Yes. Dan. Aye. All right. Thank you, counselors. Thank you, Mike. The resolution passes. E. All right. Subsection E, go over the green purchasing forms plus an example to vote on. Mike. So, we're, so Taylor beat me to the punch with that last bit, but I will go over the green purchasing forms because that has been created and I thought I'd just share with the council the process of which. So um, generally how it goes is that um, when, and I have Kenny bring up one of the two things, this is our spreadsheet that um, student orgs will use to um, purchase green purchasing materials. So I can see Paul, I can see Paul and Dan trying to look at it. Um, it's basically your basic purchasing um, spreadsheet. Um, this is what Taylor um, presented earlier today in item A. Um, it will basically, and that's kind of just an example. It's kind of your basic spreadsheet. You will put what's being purchased, how for how much, then it'll get passed by us, and then Armando will um, issue out his um, card to be per to purchase the materials for them uh, one way or another. So that's what this is. Um, and there's a two part system here, so they will complete this. And then the second thing is a form. That Kenny's going to bring up hey, that again. The second thing is a what? A form, a, a Microsoft form. form. Okay, appreciate it. That Kenny's bringing out at the moment. There's a, there's a link in the email. I would like to. These look really good. I'd like to make a, a motion go discussion on the approval of this form and we call the question voting to approve it. I second that. All right. Anybody opposed? Oh, is a, there's a, in the email, there's a link. Anybody opposed to calling? Yeah. Anybody opposed to calling the question? All right, then call the question. It is. And just to be clear, this is on the forms and the, the, the spreadsheet just. Yeah. Um, so what you will be voting on is those forms in the form of uh, the spreadsheet that Mike just put up and through unanimous consent, is anybody opposed to passing this? Hearing none. Thank you. And um, this this is the form that came up, but just it's a quick five question form. Um, it's pretty or more. I think it might be a few more than that, but it's just um, it verifies that you are a part of CMI, um, you are a student org of CMI, and you've created, completed the green purchasing course that Taylor has made through Canvas. So those are just the two kind of mechanisms that go into place for us to um, uh, purchase green purchasing materials for student orgs. So that's all I have. That's the two things, and it's been passed. So I appreciate you, Council. Sorry to cut you off with that motion, Mike. Didn't realize we had this other half, but it makes me more confident in the direction I voted. It's all good. <laughs> well, thank you, Mike. Looks good. Thank you, Council. All right, on to F. Discussion on fall break and winter break expectations. Taylor, the floor is yours. OK, all um, this is kind of just a space where I want us to discuss what our thoughts are for. Our expectations for winter break and fall break. Fall break is just around the corner. Um, our traditional meeting time is. During the break, it's at on um, Black Friday. Personally, during these breaks. Um, I don't plan on being here. I don't plan on going, attending a meeting. Um, also for finals week, traditionally that has been a day off. So totaling up, this is six weeks where we're not meeting. I just want to hear your thoughts. 
Go ahead, Paul. I um I think that a break should be a break, and so in regards to winter break and fall break, that if we are if this campus is closed to like student activity, I don't think we should meet at those times. And just also to ask kind of a follow up thing, uh, Mike, on the calendar, what we just talked about was the ninth, the week before finals being the last meeting of this semester too, correct? That's a yes or no. Yes. So the way I wrote the resolution or prior resolution was that um, that would be kind of gen generally the last agenda item was be to elect the new co-chairs and then kind of it's break time sort of thing. Okay. So yes. Okay. All right. Anybody else have any thoughts? Chad. Trying to get the mic. Um, I, I totally agree that a break should be a break and we've all been busting hump here to uh, make student size better. Hearing that six weeks of not meeting as a government body, that sounds like a lot to me. Um, <clears throat> I don't know how to I, I don't have the calendar in front of me to to figure out what days that we should meet instead of going six consecutive weeks without meeting, but I think that that should be addressed. Yes, go ahead, Paul. Mike, did you have something? Oh, yes. So okay. when Taylor's referencing six weeks, it'd be the one week for um, fall break. That's in two weeks and then the five weeks for like a winter recess. That's what those that would be equal six. So not six consecutive. It's five. No, it's consecutive, five consecutive. Like one weeks. additional a few weeks apart from yes. the other. I'm pretty sure. Taylor? Um, I want to make a motion that we take the Friday off during fall break. I second that motion. Is anybody opposed to taking the fall break off? So that's Black Friday after Thanksgiving off from meeting on Friday. Hearing none. We're not going to meet during that week. And then I'd like to make a motion um, to declare um, winter recess for this council, which would be from um, December 16th. Um, and we would meet back again at um, January 20th. That would be that would be the meeting we'd meet back on. So the chair recognizes Mike's motion. Is there a second? Is there a second? Oh, Gabe. Hi y'all. Okay. Um. So I just want to ask. So with this, did, did this also include then like committee meetings as well, or are those going to be based on the committee themselves' decision? Um. And number two, again, yes, I am all for breaks too. Um. And so yeah. So that was also something I was gonna gonna touch on. You know, I'm like yes, I'm all for breaks. However. It's almost like a month of a break, you know, yeah. um, and we're still getting paid during that time. Just wanted to like remember that. Um, yeah, and so yeah, that would just make two questions. Does this include also committees? Um, not two questions, question. just one question. Does, yeah. Mm. Here, I'll withdraw my motion upon further discussion or so we can discuss more and clarify the motion. OK, so that's heard. I would say, Gabe, can I? Uh, can I? Um, I guess that would be up to the committees themselves. So I would say, yes, the committees should meet unless discussed within the committees. I also think that's quite a long time to not. Work in advocating for the students, um, considering I think I still have a few board meetings throughout there with the um, the vice president of uh, student affairs and such like that. So I would say that whole entire time, maybe every other week or twice during that time at the very minimum, but um, I think it's important that we don't take that entire time off completely because I mean. Many might then be completely away from the university without you know really seeing what's going on here, so I think it's not appropriate. Personally, go ahead, Paul. I disagree a little bit. Um, I, I do think that knowing the people in this room that advocate for the students that you know it's even when we're not here on our basis of the council that we do continue to do that work. Um, and that, you know, even in a recess like this, I don't think that would stop me from doing any advocacy for the students necessarily. This is just to say that we wouldn't formally meet in this room to have uh, these meetings. And I would encourage like along the question that Gabe was having about committees continuing to meet. I, I would just I, I think it should be up to the committee, but I would encourage committees to like, you know, 
do what the like the rest of the council is doing. That way we don't have like one or two committees meeting and then the rest of them aren't. Um, and I think a, a break like this could serve to recharge, give time to, um, if people are going somewhere for the holidays, they would have time to travel and come back um, with a renewed vigor to re-pursue that, um, that advocacy. And, and yeah, I'll tell you what, I'm going to be drafting my next resolutions during that period of time too. I, I'm not stopping and I, I don't think we necessarily have to, but um, giving folks some breathing room during this time, I think would be good. Okay, so let's get some chat catch up really fast before I call on everybody. I see you, James, and then Gabe, then Mike. Um, but let's see, it says, yes, uh, side note on my side. Oh, no. Jeez, man. Okay, other organizations, university staff, or students meeting over the winter break. If the rest of the university is doing that and is closed, I would agree. That's from Marie. Um, Taylor says, yes, university staff is off for the week for Christmas. Recess, so the committees we're part of will be meeting then. Um, that's part of this discussion. And then here, let's see what else we have. If we do committee meetings, then what would we meet as a council for? From Stephanie, my committees won't meet over break. I'm confused what would what we would talk about during these winter meetings. And then Stephanie says, I think we should. I think we should do our committee work and maybe wait for the full uh, for our full council meetings. I also want to point out that there are some of us traveling and attending a meeting based on the time changes wouldn't work. Oh, yeah. James, go ahead. Yeah, I'm also kind of in agreement that like, you know, this is a break. We're still students. We, you know, we need breaks too. Um, I would mostly say we should just kind of play winter break as like summer rules where we are is all voluntary. If you want to come in and do some work, you can, but you know, you're not required to. Uh, committees probably should not meet because everyone kind of, I kind of agree with Paul and Taylor, like everyone's going to have a completely different schedule these next couple of weeks. Um, so I don't feel like committees will be up to their full potential if some of us are like, yeah, I don't really want to go because, you know, it's, the holidays. I don't want to really do that. Um, I think we should just, you know, recess through the month of December, have no meetings whatsoever. Um, again, voluntarily, if you want to come in or do anything else and then meet back up in January, um, we can still, you know, talk about like how the beginning of January works, but that's my thoughts. Thank you, James. Gabe. No, my, my hand was just up and I was able to take it down finally. Okay. So yeah. Thank you, Gabe. Mike. And uh, just a general announcement to so my first real bit of thinking, my first kind of line of thinking is SACAB will not meet during that time. Um, SACAB is taking that, that whole time of a recess. Um, but I do like the idea of us having a winter recess throughout the month of December and then like do maybe for the first two weeks optional work as a council for the first two weeks of January. Okay, so then Stephanie writes in the chat, I hate to be that person, but maybe we should spend stipends for five weeks if, if Hold on. If we don't want to meet, just an idea. Um, and then Reese says, I'm for meeting until the 16th and then back in January. Two week break. Sorry, all this back and forth about it. Um, any thoughts on suspending stipends? Paul, go ahead. I, uh, I do not think we should suspend the stipend in part because um, it's already incredibly low. Um, I've, you know, th this is my full time thing. Like I don't have a real job or anything else like that. Uh, quote unquote real job. This is real work, right? To reiterate that. But, um, you know, I this that would be to go five weeks without a stipend would would uh, would really inhibit my ability to be a student leader and or a, a, a good advocate, like a good advocate for those students. Like I need to survive winter break in order to come back and continue to advocate. And um, I understand, I guess, the thought process of if we're not doing work actively, we wouldn't want to receive a stipend. But I think that that's like a that's a way of seeing the stipend as like a wage labor uh, situation where we're being paid hourly when we're totally not being paid hourly. We're being paid as our role as student leaders, a leadership stipend. And so that's, you know, um, it's not based on how many hours you're clocking in the office, but more so based on like the role that we're serving here. Um, and so I don't see, you know, any less time as necessarily a problem to us, um, you know, continuing to receive 
that um, compensation for the role we serve. And then uh, Naomi and then Gabe. Can y'all can y'all hear me? <laughs> yeah, yep. Okay. Uh, sorry about that. So yeah, I, I agree with Paul, and I also see where Chad's coming from too on this. Um, I think maybe like a little bit of a compromise because I do think that like, you know, we don't have like I think that we do put a lot amount of work in for what we're doing, but we are also students, and we do deserve that break. Um, I know like just speaking, you know, from a personal perspective, um, that I'm going through a lot, <laughs> so. I think that like a mental break would just be good to not have to worry about absolutely anything. So maybe we can take like a week off where like our committees don't meet, we don't meet, like just take that full week off and then come back the next week and be like, Hey, you know, this is some stuff I thought about on the weekend, or maybe we can meet every other week instead of every week. Um, so, you know, we're still getting paid. We're still doing stuff for our students. Um, and each committee can decide when they meet, just make sure you meet before our next meeting. Um, so we meet half as much. We meet, um, you know, half as much during winter break. So twice instead of like, or twice or three times, you know, instead of every week for the five weeks. Um, that way we're still getting paid to do what we're supposed to do, but we're also getting that mental break that we really need. Um, because like I said, like we are students and I think Paul, you are right. Like we do deserve that. And I can't afford to take a pay cut either. Like I got all these jobs on campus because I want to make sure that I don't have to, you know, deter from school um, and be able to advocate for our students on campus without really having to leave campus and a full-time job outside of it really doesn't allow for us to do that. Um, but I do see where Chad and Stephanie are coming from. Like we do get paid for this. And unfortunately this isn't like a salary job where like, you know, we're, we're having to create like, um, you know, excessive amounts of data all the time where like, this is a 24 hour job where we take it home with us, which a lot of us do. Like, I'm not knocking that because Paul, I've seen your office. I know you take this work home with you, um, you know, and Chad too. So I'm not knocking that there are some of us that do do that, but there are some of us who like, like I can't afford to take this home as homework. I'm not even gonna lie to you guys. I really don't have the time for it. Um, but you know, that's why I try to make time on weekends for it, but that's just, you know, my perspective. So I, I hope that helps. Um, thank you, Naomi. Um, Gabe. Awesome. So several things. Number one, I just want to remind people this is civil service. This is not a job. Um, please don't call it a job. Dr. Brown. I, don't, I, don't, I think Dr. Brown's not here anymore, but like um, it was something that's, that was made very, very like prominent. It's like this is not a job and calling it a job or mentioning that it's like anything relate, relating to that can cause any issues. Um, can cause a lot of issues regarding the stipend format and the leadership format of is this a job or is this a leadership opportunity type of thing so just you know again this is not a job this is your civil service you're providing your civil service to the student population and representing them not a job just wanting to clear that up um and then in addition to that um i really liked naomi's idea um because i also agree you know that although yes we are students yes you know we, we also definitely do need breaks you know because self-care 100 percent, love that however we're still getting our stipends through student fees you know and so i definitely think you know if there's just some sort of like still stuff is happening type of thing um whether that is you know meeting just twice over the break or just meeting once or whatever i think it's still better than nothing just based on the fact that we're still getting our stipends from the students yeah thank so you Gabe. My stuff. thank you thank you so much um uh, paul go ahead so i i wanted to see if i could kind of summate a lot of what we've been like uniting on and i i see a lot of unity on the notion that you know a break is a break and that we deserve some breathing time I also see a lot of unity on the notion that, you know, just because we're in the winter break doesn't mean that our role as student advocates necessarily like dissolves. Um, and I see what Taylor's written in the chat is I think working asynchron asynchronously is good. So just general brainstorming, if you have ideas, sometimes uh, for me, uh, our resolutions uh, just uh, ideas for resolutions just come and I write them. That's the kind of service I envision for myself over the break. And I think that we have a lot of opportunity to like lean into that process in the comfort of our own homes or wherever you decide to maybe go somewhere for vacation. Um, but we'd have the freedom to do that. And so I guess my motion, um, you know, while not necessarily tying us to a, a, an official meeting here, 
Um, I stand by what I said about the the work. You know, I don't mean to like you know mince words about job or anything like that. I agree with what you're saying, Gabe. But I guess I want a motion to pick up what Mike had said that we take December 16th to January 20th off as a uh, as a um, I forget what you called it, but um, a break, and then we pursue the work like like uh, Taylor has said on an optional basis, but an encouraged one. Uh, Taylor, did you want to add something to that? Yeah, I just want to change some of your language just with um, calling it a break. Maybe you just call it um, asynchronous voluntary work, not work, service. Asynchronous voluntary service for the break, okay. Yeah, we'll have an AVS break. We'll call it, no, I'm just kidding, asynchronous voluntary service, um, period. Chad, you got something you want to add to that? Um, two things. Does this so one, the motion was withdrawn, so another motion needs to be made. Additionally, That's it. are we saying that January 20th is when we would meet again? Because right now the prop the proposed time frame is six meetings in a row that we would not be meeting. My motion was to pick up the motion that Mike had said. And so it's just to repeat the motion, but you know, and it hasn't had a second yet. And so you can die on the floor here if this isn't something that people support or if you think we should change that chat i'd be willing to hear a amendment or something right. just so we can get through this portion and on to the rest of the business i second the motion you made chair recognizes paul's motion to pick off where the, the, the for a avs break december 16th through january 20th and the chair recognizes mike's second Anybody opposed I am opposed. I, I I think that six weeks is a substantial amount of time to not meet in a row. Um, I while I do agree with what is what is being said about needing a break and the asynchronous work, um, we've had meetings that are twenty minutes long. I don't see how that could be something that we couldn't do over this time frame to help pad some of that that time because we are still being paid with student funds with through our stipend and to just not not address our our responsibilities during that time would be um, irresponsible in my opinion. Any other opposition before we move into you know more general discussion? Gabe? Yep, yeah, I just gotta re reiterate. Uh, I agree with Chad <laughs> with all that Chad said. I agree. Um, because yes, I'm all for breaks and everything, but still, you know, we're still getting stipends through this time. Um, and while I'm also all for, you know, paid breaks, six weeks is like still a very, very long time. Um, I believe to not meet, you know, um, and, and I'm wondering like, is there, like, where would the compromise be? Could we do something kind of like what we did within the summer when whoever is available to meet can meet if they're available um and just do it like kind of based on that so you know like if it, if any if the person is available to meet great if not great you know um is there something that is that something that could like is, is there something that people agree with you know of just like having it as an optional meeting instead of a um I can speak as well and then oh call. sorry and then in addition to that um also thinking about like Kenny because Kenny is our secretary you know and so us, executive well, assistant. us not meeting all oh, executive assistant sorry our executive assistant so if us not meeting will that have any impact on Kenny's um like duties or you know Kenny's job good. because Kenny that, that is the job so would that have any impact good negative well, good question well good questions um, I, um Paul Paul go ahead yeah I just I interpret one of the questions you had as like a direct question about the motion so that's why I was like compelled to jump in and click like answer that I do think that that's kind of the AVS form that we're looking for is the asynchronous voluntary service period so that we can have those meetings if we want to those of us who are particularly passionate like myself and others amongst us here are going to take that opportunity that's part of the motion we have ahead of us and so it sounds like you may be in agreement with us um but yeah kenny kenny are you going to be here when are you going to be gone or when are you going to be available are you going to be available let's hear it okay so um 
so just a little bit about my schedule. I plan to go back to Indonesia on Wednesday, um, December 21st, and I will not be back until January 25th. Um, I can always join A synchronously, although that would be a bit tough given how the meeting time in Indonesia would be like four in the morning. Oh, no. Yeah, no. Okay. Um, let's do Naomi, Stephanie, James. Actually, James was definitely before me, and I just kind of like want to respect the stack. So um, it can be James, Stephanie, or and do Naomi. So, so there's a progressive stack and you haven't talked much. And so James has, so I called on you unless you want oh. to yield it. Yeah. So I just called on you just because you haven't had much of a voice this meeting. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you. I just, uh, yeah, I just didn't know. You're good. Was, but That's okay. Me. You're um, good. <laughs> no, um, I think that we should, um, really take into consideration that like, I get that we get the stipend, I get that it's a civil service, but like, we also have to look at the bigger picture here. Okay. And, we are trying to be, I mean, James, of course, he out here trying to be in the president, you know what I mean? So I think that like, this is gonna be one of those situations that really builds, like, I get it, our congressmen and congresswomen, whatever, like, we see that they take breaks too. And I get that, but they have like a lot bigger load, but we're trying to advocate for our students on a level that like, doesn't necessarily always require that. And I get that we need breaks, that's why I'm all for a partial break um, or um, se separation of time from, you know, the advocacy council, but I do think that like, we need to set the example for the next institute or for the next council and for our students and show them that like, we don't care. We want to choose to balance self care and still advocating for them while we're on break and taking six weeks off. Isn't really setting a good example in my opinion, because that's just showing that like, Oh no, this is like our future politicians and our future congressmen. Like they're just going to, you know, take six weeks off from like making decisions for us. Like, you know, there's always that potential that someone could reach out to you or we come up with an idea. And I like the fact that we're going to do something asynchronous, but I really, really think it's just good for us to meet and have the opportunity for, you know, someone to come in with public comment. Because if we don't meet in person, then we take away that opportunity for public comment as well. Granted, the students are in session, but I do believe they still have that right. And please correct me if I'm wrong. But like if they wanted to do public comment during these sessions because they finally have time to, you know, come up with a problem that they want to discuss with us because, you know, they were so busy during this, uh, you know, the semester that they couldn't talk to us, and now they can. We're now taking away that opportunity from them, and now they don't know if they're going to have a chance next semester. So I think that we also need to take in consideration the students as well. And like I said, I get if we need to take one, two weeks off right off the bat, totally cool. Or if we just want to meet three straight weeks and then have the other um, weeks off, that's great. Or meet every other week, that's fine. But I do not think that we should take six weeks off completely from meeting. I get that this is a civil service, but then we need to service them. And I get certain right. requires us to be, you know, balanced within ourselves, but we need to really set the example, I think. All right. Thank you, Naomi. Stephanie. Yeah, um, I don't want to be that guy, but I'm being that guy. I feel like we should at least, the compromise in my eyes is at least having one scheduled meeting during that time and the rest be asynchronous voluntary service um but at least just one so then we're all able to kind of like if we do have those ideas for resolutions or maybe just brainstorming ideas for like whatever else is on our minds concerning <coughs> excuse me student advocacy then we can like talk about it or i don't know we see something going on within higher ed and we want to talk about it like I feel like we should at least have one scheduled meeting. That's the bare minimum for me and the rest be ABS um, or something else. But I do feel since we are getting our stipend and I do love the whole break idea. I love a good break, but six weeks is a long break. Um, and especially since we're getting paid, um, I think that we still need to have some kind of set day or specific action items that we want to be working on or sorry offering service for during this time i think that would be wonderful thank you stephanie um james and then chad okay so i'm i'm just thinking we you know real quick mike quick question when was the last day of our meeting that you plan on our resolution i'm sorry i keep forgetting that date the ninth the ninth okay i say the week after the ninth obviously is like finals Last thing on anyone's mind is going to be student advocacy. It's, oh my God, am I going to pass? I say we take just, you know, 
three weeks off, you know, because it's, you know, it's finals. Then it's the week before and kind of of Christmas. I personally do not want to meet anywhere near Christmas. Um, I say we just take like the rest of December off and then reconvene like the first week of January. That way it allows us a couple weeks of break. Naomi has a good point. Congress takes like three week breaks for Fourth of July, which is still weird to me. I think we can, you know, afford to have a three week break. We are still students. I think students would also understand that like, hey, they do both school and student advocacy. They need breaks too. Um, so I, I think like three weeks is not much, like three weeks for us just to take time, re recharge our batteries, have a mental, you know, just vacation will not hurt anyone nor the school and just reconvene the first week of January. I'm like that ABS, like, you know, optional meeting. And then we can figure out a time within the next couple of weeks to really like reconvene for official meetings. Thank, thank you, James. Uh, Chad. I would like to propose a friendly a moment. Ooh, words. A friendly moment, a friendly amendment. Um, so as it stands right now, it would be December 16th to December or to January 20th. Um, I would like for us to meet January 13th and um, and continue the the other or have the other days off that you have proposed. So you the, have proposed the 12th through the 13th. No, no. So we would still, we would, my, sorry. we would still have the recess of December 16th to the 20th with the caveat that we would meet on January the 13th. Thank you for clarification. Uh, can someone friendly. remind me who my second was on that though? Was it mm -hmm. you, Mike, the second? I'm willing to accept that as friendly. Are right. you? Yes. Um, I don't think it needs to be into the amendments, but I mean, my plan was just to do it like asynchronously by online. It did not need to be like in person okay. in this room. So. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Then I'm happy to accept that as a friendly Perfect. amendment to the but, motion. What, Taylor? Do you have some thoughts on that or something? Well, and then Stephanie. Um, yeah. Just to be clear, um, I don't think anyone is expected to attend these meetings in person. That I, that's just laughable to me. But okay. You're talking about the one on the. Oh, just he's talking about all these meetings. If I understand. Oh, oh, requirement. Uh, Stephanie, yeah. did you have something you wanted to add? Oh, can someone type out the motion? Yeah, we can do that. And so just to repeat it, the motion would be to take a recess from, uh, or rather take an AVS, an asynchronous voluntary service period from December 16th to January 20th, where we have a meeting on the 13th. Um, asynchronous participation encouraged. And so. Thank you, Kenny. Thank you, Kenny. Yep. And right. um, so. Yeah, I, I guess at this point I will call the question. Okay. Do we have a second on ending discussion, putting this to a vote? Chair recognizes the call to, to question and the second for Mike. All right. Chad. Yes. Gabe. Yes. James. Yes. Mike. Yes. <laughs> Naomi. Yes. Paul. Yes. Three. Aye. Aye. Okay. Stephanie. Yes. Taylor. Yes. Dan. Yes. All right. Thank you, Council. Motion passes. Good work. All right, so thank you for uh, bringing that to the discussion table, Taylor. All right, on to subsection G. This is you, Paul, you have the floor. Thank you. I'd just like to introduce this uh, resolution. Uh, it's titled uh, Resolved, um, and unless anyone opposes, um, I'm, you know, is anyone opposed to me reading this out before we vote on it? Not opposed. Oh, uh, anybody else? Okay, so hearing none, I'm going to just move forward with that then. Uh, resolved, the MSU Denver Student Government TSAC wants to make our university more accessible, exclamation point. Um, whereas over the, la uh, over the past year, U.S. public universities has have seen a hike in tuition costs nationwide. Uh, as post-secondary educational institutions raise prices to attend, 
enrolling in universities and colleges is becoming more difficult for working class students. The right to attain higher education is slipping out of the reach of low income students across Colorado. Uh, whereas when assessing our programs based on ROI or return on investment, it's important that the university take a holistic approach in understanding the value of investing in diversity, equity and inclusivity initiatives, including the funding of DEI resources and cultural organizations. A simple cost analysis is inadequate in assessing the value of this kind of programming. DEI resources and cultural organizations on campus, student organized or otherwise, provide students with the critical cultural connection to their education that promotes academic and professional success. Cutting the budget of cultural groups on campus is unacceptable as it discourages the uniting of students from similar, similar cultural, national or ethnic backgrounds for community building. Whereas lastly, U.S. public universities across the nation have seen a steady decline of black student enrollment. This is unacceptable because black students have historically uh, have been historically underrepresented in post-secondary institutions as a way to subjugate their access to socioeconomic mobility and security. Low black student enrollment is particularly unacceptable for universities like the Metropolitan State University of Denver, where the black community makes up nearly 10 percent of the surrounding population, yet less than one tenth of our student body. Disparities in Black student enrollment at universities in proportion to the surrounding community areas cannot be tolerated. Attempts to recruit and invest in the education of black students within university areas should be increased to make accessing an education more equitable and with the aim of increasing graduation rates and fostering an educational environment where black students feel supported and prioritized. Whereas our university has inaccessible infrastructure that makes it difficult for physically disabled students to make their way around campus, automatic doors are often broken, and ramps are infrequent and or poorly marked. Um, therefore, be it resolved by the student uh, government, Student Advocacy Council of MSU Denver, action one, we will call on our university to lower tuition costs and to end the rising tuition hikes. Uh, action two, we stand in solidarity with international and cultural student groups organizing for justice in their respective communities and demand that the organizations do not undergo defunding. Action three, we denounce the declining admission of black students in universities and demand more attempts at supporting the enrollment as well as the financial sustainment of this historically underrepresented student group. Action four, we demand that AHEC build accessible infrastructure that is wheelchair friendly and ensure that existing automatic doors and similar amenities are in full working order. And we ask our university administration to join us in advocating for this demand. Action five, we ask that President Biden follow through with his campaign promise of canceling all student debt and we will send them a signed letter to this effect. And that's the totality of it. So happy to open this up for discussion um, and we'll, we can hear from opposition first. So is anyone opposed? James. So I just want to say I only oppose to one thing in this entire thing because of all of it I agree with, but I don't agree with action one specifically because I don't believe lowering tuition costs is realistic right now um you know due to everything going on we're down on enrollment uh the school is already trying to like figure out how to you know adjust its funds correspondingly right now um president davidson and taylor have made it plainly clear that you know it's not really necessarily the uh college the university's fault that tuition is hiking up it is because our state legislator has been doing a growing disinvestment in public education, which is causing these hikes. Um, so for me, to action one needs to be aimed specifically at our state legislature rather than the university, because you know, if we lower tuition costs, we need to find another way for the university to get revenue so they can continue to support programs that we are giving on this campus that a lot of students benefit from, um, and other things like paying teachers and paying students that you know thrive off of the money that the school accumulates. So I, I disagree with action one, but the rest I do agree with. Three. Paul, I loved how you've, you've updated this. It's great. I would only suggest, based on what James just said, maybe a friendly amendment to action one where the university actively searches for additional funding streams um, to be able to assist minority groups, specifically, you know, the underserved um, cultural groups who have tr problems with tuition. I'm. Um, I'll just. I'll decline the friendly amendment. Read not because I disagree with that idea, um, but just because I think the university is doing that, um, and I, I. I question if that's. Um, it. 
it doesn't to me strike with the general thrust of what this resolution speaks to. So, um, you know, okay. feel free to continue with your amendment if you like, but I just, um, yeah, it would be a different resolution. Gabe. Awesome, cool. Okay, I just have uh, two questions. One of them, um, when you talk about action two, um, are you talking about like student organizations or what type of like organizations on that? Um, and then for action five, um, are we going to like see the letter before it goes out? Yeah, so to speak to those two questions, the first one, um, item two speaks to student groups uh, and just to kind of reread it here, I guess I'll say um, international and cultural student groups organizing for justice in their respective communities. And so if that's a group organizing around um, like Latinx issues um, or like uh, Black, Black Xera, for example, um, you know, I guess this would apply overall to like CMEI and student orgs, um, you know, departments, I think like um, like Chicano studies and Africana studies as well. Uh, the reason that I was motivated to create this action was uh, because of how I've heard uh, budgets discussed at the at the tables of power in this university. A lot of focus around return on investment, and I fear that um, you know the return on investment isn't immediately tangible in dollar signs with a lot of this stuff. But when you look down the road at what the kind of community it builds, the kind of long term. Um, enrollment and graduation rate, uh, the ways it could impact those figures, I, I, I think that it is important that they not undergo defunding. But I kept it kind of general because rather than like list all the particular orgs, you know, which, which would be a, it'd be three paragraphs here. I wanted to be general in uh, international and cultural student groups organizing for justice. Um, and then to answer the second one, sorry for rambling on a little bit here. Um, you spoke about the letter. Um, yeah, ideally, I was either um, ideally we would want to let everyone see it before we send it off, and it was going to be short, sweet, and to the point, like four, five sentences long, um, just essentially reiterating the campaign promise, maybe when it was made, putting a date on it, and then uh, reiterating the council support should this pass, and our call uh, to cancel all student debt per his original campaign promise. And so, does that answer your two questions, Gabe? Cool. Chad. Um, I personally would like to do more research on this to kind of address some of this stuff. Um, was when was this bill or when was this resolution put forth to the council to view prior to this meeting? It was sent to some people on the council uh, who I believe would work with me on the resolution, um, but it was just in this meeting now. OK. Um, I don't want to be that guy, but I'm going to be that guy. You're that Article guy. 2, Section 3 bills, resolutions and amendments will be introduced to the full council for voting consideration. All bills introduced must be available to the council at least 24 hours prior to the meeting to allow members to familiarize themselves with the material. Um, I think that there's a lot more research that needs to go on into this. I just based off of a couple of Google searches see that the total enrollment of uh, universities is down 9.4 percent. So uh, I, I don't know that just calling on the uh, the black community and their um, total enrollment being down is is a fair assessment when only looking at that small piece of the pie. I appreciate you raising that, and I'll admit that being an oversight in my drafting of this, um, and in the future I'll reflect on that. Um, but I want to, you know, for the sake of um, trying to get this passed today, I would motion that we suspend the rule on that 24 hour rule so that you can consider it. It's been read. Um, yeah. Would anyone second the motion of suspending the rule for the passage of this uh, resolution? Just throwing it out there. I'll second it. All right. And so, OK, we'll open that up for discussion. Gabe. Um, cool. So with that rule, um, talking about that rule, several things. Number one, because um, it would be an amendment, right, to our handbook? Wait, yeah, right? It would be an amendment. So if it's an amendment, but doesn't it need then, um, it would need like two thirds, right? And would I- I'm just, it, yeah. I can answer that really quick. I, I'm just suggesting a temporary suspension of that rule. Um, 
it was an oversight, but yeah. Okay. But go cool. ahead to continue there, Gabe. I'm sorry to cut you off. No, you're good. Um, so all I'm gonna say, also I'm just gonna say, um, is like, yeah. So I was gonna say what Stephanie was gonna say of like, is this something that we can do? You know, based on our governing documents, like suspending the rule. Um, and two, all I gotta say, um, is like we have not been following this rule, pre like beforehand either. Um, and so I definitely think that that's, that's something to just take into consideration of like how closely are we following the rules um, that we have set for ourselves? Um, because like I said, you know, I just make sure that like we are following the rules um, in all instances. Yeah, thank you. James? Yeah, I don't, we're not able to suspend a piece of the Constitution. That's not how the Constitution works. If you want to change something from the Constitution, you must submit an amendment. So oh. you can't motion or strike a rule. Oh, point of order, just a point of parliamentary order, we can. Yeah. Uh, suspension of the rule uh, is something that can be done in Robert's rules. And the very first resolution we passed as a council was to adopt Robert's rules as a, uh, as a, as our, our uh, as our uh, document moving forward, uh, or at least as how we run our meetings. And so until that is switched, we do like, if you read Robert's rules, as was encouraged in that resolution, it encouraged us all to become familiarized with it. You'll understand that suspension of the rules is a regular thing that can be done under Robert's rules. And it's a, yeah. Okay, but if you read the Constitution that you voted on, you cannot. The Constitution is currently our binding document, not Robert's rules. We follow Robert's rules procedure on meeting facilitation, but when it comes to certain things that are specifically stated hey, in the Constitution. James, we'll recognize you. We'll just make sure we're honoring who has the floor at which point in time. And okay, we've had a few hands up for a moment. You interrupted me, my guy. So point of order. Just no. now, because I'm the co-chair, we're restoring the the speaker order. Well, I was right. In the middle of you can obtain the floor, and we're happy to give it to you. But just for the sake of order here, you can get your voice out and you can have your dissent. But we've had several hands up before you started speaking, and we want to make sure they get their chance too. Yes, James, so, I've had my hands up. Emily, it's my turn to speak. After I don't believe you were granted a time to rebuttal to him. It's my turn to speak. Go ahead, right. Mike. Thank you. I wasn't finished speaking. I will say that. Well, it's my turn to speak. So, um, two questions, one question and one more statement necessarily. Um, in regards, I don't love the idea of suspending the rule either, but I will say in pure clarity that um, my amendment or my resolution did not get, put, it was sent out this morning. So that's not 24 hours in advance, therefore the same rules that happened, mine would not have been passed. So I'm in a difficult position here because I believe if that was, if this is a reason for it, it should have been brought to them. Just saying that out loud. Um, secondly, um, James, is there a specific amendment in the Constitution that says that we cannot suspend the rules? Is that written in pure English that we can look up? Because Robert's rules, we're governed by Robert's rules as well. Yes, the Constitution states in the amendment process, if you wish to make changes to the Constitution in any format, you have to submit an amendment. This would be a change to the Constitution by suspending it. I don't I feel that's a mischaracterization of the motion to suspend the rules. Um, and then it's to suspend the rules for the passage of this. Um, okay, this, right? rule, this, this isn't a change to the governing document. And again, James, you know, we'll recognize you, uh, but we have Taylor and then we'll go back to you. Taylor. Y'all, I kind of think our conversation is uh, devolving. I like a lot of what this resolution stands for, but I think they're, um, some points about research, further research could, they're valid. And I think that um, we should table it till next week. Seconded. Anybody opposed to the I, tabling? I am opposed to the tabling. What? Um, I think tabling this resolution is a smack in the face to the students that struggle with the doors that don't open when they press the button. Um, same goes to the disrepair that we see in the actual like concrete and some of these ramps. Um, and the same goes to um, the students who are now, um, you know, saddled with student debt. Like basically what this is talking about, like we're not the ones um, 
lowering the tuition hikes. We're simply calling for that to take place. Um, we're not the ones um, going out and fixing these doors. We're calling on the university to like pick up its end and follow through with it. Um, and calling up, calling the president to follow through with what he promised us initially. So this to me is the bare minimum. And it's like, the reason I would hate to table it is because if we have to table the bare minimum, what happens when we want to actually do some more substantive stuff? Are we going to, is that even going to get to the table? Or will we table that too? Is there any further discussion? Gabe? Um, so my question is, are there like, are there three motions on the floor? You know, because it kind of feels like that because didn't Paul motion to, did Paul motion to pass this? I don't remember, but I know it was motioned like, like what, what are we on right now? I can clarify that. So certain types of motions will take like our privileged to others. And while we did have a main motion um, to pass this, um, Taylor's motion to table it, um, having been seconded, is a privileged motion. And so we then moved on to discussion of whether or not we're going to table this resolution. Um, and that's where we're at. Does that clarify things a little bit? Yes. Um, and then, and so that also then um, surpasses the motion to um, suspend the rule, right? For Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, so Thank I you. guess... To, to clarify really quick, I, I was a little wrong there. So we had the motion to pass this. Chad raised the problem of there having been a rule in our constitution that says this had to be out 24 hours sooner. Another motion was made to suspend the rules, which is a privileged motion to a main motion, and then a motion was made on top of that. So it does get a little complicated, hard to follow. But the one we're discussing now is to table this um, and move and basically move on. So I call the question of tabling the um, the, the one that we're on now. So Chad. Yes. Gabe. Yes. James. Yes. Mike. I abstain. Naomi. No. Paul. No. Bree. I abstain. Stephanie. Yes. Taylor. Yes. Dan. No. All right, so. All right, so the motion is being tabled. Is there a date on that table? No, there wasn't. Okay. Get up off the table. Okay. All right, so thank you for that, Council. All right, on to public comment. So, per our rules, if you're here for public comment, you have five minutes to speak. If you would just please put your name in the chat, or if you're here in person, let us know your name and then you have the floor for five minutes. So if there's anyone in the, in the public who would like to make a comment, now's your time. Going second on the public comment. We encourage public comment. We love public comment. Stephanie, go ahead. Although not hey, public. Um, so I don't know if I should bring this up now. It's not really from a member of the public. No. Should I wait? Uh, Wait, say this again. Is this is this a public comment? It's not a public comment. It's a comment that I want to make. So should I wait or is this an OK? Yeah, yeah, okay. yep. Yeah. Let's wait till outside of public comment. Going twice. All right. I'm not seeing any public or hearing any public comment requests. So Stephanie, floor is yours. <laughs> OK, thank you. Um, so I just wanted to bring up an incident that had happened related to uh, CU Law. 
um, I think it had happened um, November 4th or basically around Dia de los Muertos. Um, just something that I wanted to bring up within our council, see if we could extend any kind of support their way. Um, but basically during this holiday, which is a holiday to remember those, those that have passed, um, their ofrenda was basically taken down by CU Denver's um, like management or like facilitators, janitors, whatever you want to call them. Um, without any kind of notice. Um, it was very disrespectful, um, especially in the eyes of what this holiday means to those who celebrate it. Um, so I was just wondering if like, it don't gotta happen right now, but like maybe like we could reach out to them, say, hey, like, is there anything we can do at MSU Denver in support of this happening on such, you know, an important holiday for those who celebrate it? Um, but yeah, I can send over some more like, information or whatever but just thought I would bring it up that that is happening still and we need to actively um support these kinds of things with our voice and our advocacy because even though it's not on our campus it's happening at another campus here in Colorado <laughs> yeah that's all I have thank you Stephanie for that um um would you set mind sending out an email to the council um I guess with some details on that and I, and I think that would be something that would be wise for us to address is there anybody that wants to say anything to that? Thank you. Go ahead, Paul. I wanted to thank you for bringing that to our attention, Stephanie. Um, that to me sounds like just a, a real uh, a real way to hamper the development of any other sort of like cultural presence on our campus or on any campus, you know, and it kind of just, you know, in the absence of, um, you know, like a cultural presence for like students from like a, like a, like a, I guess a non-white background we just have whiteness pervading our institutions and so um i'm interested to hear more about that and to see what we can do in terms of throwing our support behind um you know be it a condemnation or maybe some way we can help foster a a uh, a way to make sure that doesn't happen next year thank you paul thank you stephanie all right unless there's anything else anybody wants to say regarding this that stephanie brought up i move to adjourn the meeting second all right anybody opposed Hearing none, meetings adjourned. Thank you, Council.